The sponsor of this episode is Skillshare. Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today we're going to do something crazy. I've tasted many expensive wines, mystery wines, and special wines on this channel, but I've never tasted three expensive, special, mystery wines in one video before. And I'm not talking about regular expensive, special, mystery wines, if such a thing exists. I'm talking about wines that appear to be Lafitte, Latour, and Mouton, all first rows from Pauillac in Bordeaux, and they appear to be over a hundred years old. So let's find out whether they are really all that special, shall we? A few weeks ago, a subscriber contacted me and told me about these wines that he has in his cellar. Lots of people sent me photos of old wines they found, but this story sounded very interesting. He had bought wines from an old royal estate. The house was in the family for centuries and they had lots of bottles in their cellar. He tasted some of these wines together with friends and found them to be good. Sietze, a Dutchman, sent me some pictures and offered to send me some bottles as well. What really piqued my interest was seeing references on the label. Lafitte, Latour and Mouton are clearly visible. There are five wineries in Bordeaux that carry the distinction of Premier Grand Cru Classé and they represent the pinnacle of quality from that famous region. The most recent vintages cost hundreds of euros even before the wine is bottled and old vintages can easily cost thousands of euros, thousands of euros for 0.75 liters of fermented grape juice. Crazy. One reason why these wines have become legendary is because they can age for a long, long time. I've tasted some examples that were decades old, but can they really survive a hundred years? The labels are in terrible condition and there's no way for me to find the vintage or identify the wine clearly as such, even though Sietze selected some more beautiful bottles. What I've gathered from Sietze's and my research is that these wines are merchant bottlings from a time when these wines weren't necessarily bottled at the estate. You know there were times when Bordeaux Chateaus were selling most of their wines in barrel to be bottled at a merchant or negociant in France, England or Belgium for example. Mouton Rothschild stopped this practice in 1924 and then all of the other Premier Grand Cru Classés followed suit. The wines were bottled by Amtmann, who was, according to Sietze, a negociant based in Bordeaux. I found out little information on this business, but I found out that Jean Mathieu Charles Amtmann was a negociant who was based in Bordeaux in the 19th century. So this further suggests that this wine might actually be older than a hundred years. This story clearly has as many holes as the labels on the bottles, but to me it kind of checks out. So now let's look at the wine itself. The levels of the wine are pretty low. They are right here in the shoulder, which is not necessarily great, but it doesn't mean that the wine has gone bad and it's pretty typical for a wine this old. The bottles, the glass of the bottles looks pretty typical for a really old bottle. Those are not industrially produced bottles that are standardized. You can see some uneven bits and pieces. So this is typical. The label, <laughs> I've never seen a label in such a sorry state. It looks like it has turned from paper into chalk apparently and it seems like they've experimented with underwater aging at this estate as well. I gotta tell you probably the humid conditions that have caused this label to decay have helped the cork to stay flexible so that would be a plus that might mean that the wine is still alive. But now let's open the bottles. I'm going to use the Durand for those bottles, for those very old bottles. And in case that doesn't work out, I need to get my port tongs out again, but I don't think anybody wants that after the whole Burmester incident. Before I get into tasting these amazing wines, I want to thank the sponsor of this episode, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online courses and members all across the world. It is easy to use and offers courses on a vast range of different topics ranging from animation to web development and wine. I want to continue learning and improving my skills for the rest of my life and this is why I decided that I want to work on my photography skills. My pictures are fine but I think I can do better if I understand the fundamentals of my camera even better and this is why I took the fundamentals of DSLR photography course by Justin Bridges. 
He's a really cool professional photographer and in his very structured course I learned a lot about shutter speed, aperture and ISO and now my pictures are getting better. Skillshare is entirely ad free and there are new classes launched each week. They now come with subtitles in Spanish, Portuguese, French and even German. The first 1000 people who click on the link below this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so check that out. And now let's taste some wine. I'm starting with the Mouton Rothschild. This estate is owned by the Rothschild family and Baron Philippe de Rothschild really put the winery on the map when he took it over in the 1920s. He was the one who managed to get the winery upgraded to Premier Grand Cru Classé status in 1973. So it's kind of crazy to think that this wine was still classified as a Deuxième Cru Classé and on top of that, that it might have been made before Philippe took over. So this tool, the Durand, was really invented in order to open really old bottles and hopefully this will do the job. The cork actually still looks pretty good. There it is. One piece. I was kind of hoping that there might be a vintage on that cork, but I don't see anything. I'm impressed by this cork. This is top stuff. So I'm not going to decant this wine because I don't want to expose it to too much oxygen. I'm just going to take it easy, pour it into that glass and see whether it's still alive. This is what old wine looks like. Man, it's brown. <laughs> what? Judging from the color, I was actually thinking that this might be completely gone, but it's not. It smells like Bordeaux. I would have guessed in a blind tasting that this is Bordeaux, I'm pretty sure, because it has this cassis flavor, tobacco leaf, also a little bit of leather coming through. I mean, it's all a bit tuned down and on the palate, it's definitely quite lean. The tannins have all melted away. It's quite a lot of acidity as well, but it's still present. I mean, it's not gone at all. There are, however, also notes of port coming through, which means that it has slightly oxidized. But I gotta say, before opening this bottle, I actually thought that this might be the worst bottle in the bunch because I could already smell the wine a little bit through the capsule. So there must have been a little bit of leakage there coming through and Mouton was probably not the best winery in Bordeaux at that time, so quality might have been a little bit lower than what you would expect from Mouton today. But this is still beautiful, interesting, exciting. So this is still a really exciting wine. If I have to rate this wine, I have to first say that this score probably won't reflect how exciting it is for me to taste this wine but it's just not there anymore. I mean, it's still interesting, exciting, and there's still fruit flavor there, but I would rate this wine 81 points. It is good in terms of quality. It is a little bit oxidized, but it still stands up. But in the context of the fact that this is a really, really old wine, probably older than 100 years, it is amazing. So let's move on to the second wine, Chateau Latour. Chateau Latour is a very prominent estate. The first one to your right when you drive into Pauillac from saint julien It was classified as a first gross in 1855 and it still has a great reputation. Francois Pinot owns it today and he invests quite a lot of money into the estate to make sure that the wines are top notch. Back then things were different. Chateau Latour was selling wines in barrels, which would be unthinkable today. And let's see whether this wine turned out okay. This bottle actually has the highest level out of the three. It's up here, which is pretty good for a really old bottle of wine. So let's pull this out. I gotta say, I like the Durand. It's a pretty useful tool, not sponsored. Just wanna clean this a little bit to make sure that I don't get too much stuff into my glass. How about those corks? I'm very impressed. They could have made my life a lot easier though if they would have printed 
the vintage on that core. So the color is already quite something. This is a little bit more dark than the Mouton. So there's more concentration here. The color is more red. There's obviously lots of brown in here as well, but it's a bit more red. And that kind of suggests that this might be more fresh, more young, but yeah, let's taste it first. I wish you could be here. So the Mouton was already quite interesting, but this is on another level. This is more concentrated, more rich. There's flavors of cassis, blackberries coming through and there's spice notes as well. On the palate, it's really rich vultures. There are tenants there, but they are really soft and round. There's a fresh vibrancy on the palate. So this feels like an old wine, but it doesn't feel like a very, very old wine, even though I'm pretty convinced that this is really, really old. This feels like there's still life in it and I'm quite impressed. You know, the interesting thing is that these wines might be from another world, but they also feel very familiar. Again, if I would taste this in a blind tasting, I would think I put it into Bordeaux. There's this fruit flavor combined with meaty blood notes coming through, which, yeah, very much remind me of classic Bordeaux. I'm going to rate this wine 92 points, but for me, it's kind of difficult to put a number onto those wines because they are just extraordinary. They are very, very special. This just is amazing just because it's still alive. And this actually still gives me quite a bit of pleasure. So what an experience. So here we go, Chateau Lafitte. Lafitte is often considered to be the best of the best. It's often mentioned on the top in the classification. It was certainly a first growth classified in 1855, and it's still one of the most desirable, most high-priced wines in the world. It is today owned by the Rothschild family, and I remember times when I used to work in London and worked at a company that was trading in fine wine. Lafitte was all the rage back then. The Asian market was really keen to get as much Lafitte as possible. And I like the wines a lot. I've been to the estate a lot of times. I've dined there. I had really good bottles of wine, but I've never tasted anything this old, I think. There's quite a lot of mold and stuff under the capsule but that's not a huge problem. I hope that I don't mess up the last cork. That would be embarrassing. This cork is in a worse condition than the others. That's always the thing with corks. I mean, they are a natural product, so they are not as reliable as some other closures. So let's try Chateau Lafitte. It is pretty brown and slightly cloudy. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a bit disappointed. I kind of thought Lafitte might be in the highlight in the tasting, that's why I put it last. But this is actually the worst performing out of the three, in my opinion. It still smells interesting. There's quite a lot going on there. It smells a little bit of red currants, plums, a little bit of spice obviously there's quite a lot of porty notes coming through as well but it's just quite acidic on the palate looks pretty light in terms of color as well and it just yeah it just isn't good anymore so i'm going to rate this wine 65 points i'm sorry lafitte but at this point, there are no great wines anymore. There are only great bottles. And this clearly isn't a great bottle, maybe because of this cork, which looked pretty nasty, but maybe the wine just wasn't good when it was put into bottle. Who can tell? I can't. But this experience, man, this was exciting. So first of all, thank you to Sietze for sending me these wines so that I can share this experience with all of you guys. You should all comment down below. Thank you, Sietze, because that was really generous. You are my favorite subscriber right now, Sietze. Well done. Secondly, I think this was an amazing tasting and it clearly showed that Bordeaux has so much to offer. The best wine of the tasting 
was the Chateau Latour, the worst was the Lafitte, but all of these wines, I mean, man, if you survive such a long time and you're still doing okay, that's a huge accomplishment and I'm very impressed with all of these wines. Before I move these wines somewhere else, I'm going to invite someone in to taste these wines. Somebody you all know, somebody who is really keen to taste old Bordeaux. So Leon, come on in. Okay, wow. Which wine is your favorite out of the line? Uh, definitely that one. Okay, so this that's one over here, the yeah, yeah. Latour. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as far as I know Latour, this might be Latour, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The question of the day is, which is the oldest Bordeaux you've ever tasted? Please comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.